here in Sheikh Jarrah right now. Right here behind me. A battle over evictions in Jerusalem Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. <laughs> Sheikh Jarrah is a neighborhood of Jerusalem located one kilometer north of the old city. It was established during the Ottoman era in 1865 and gradually came to house some of the city's elite and wealthy. It was a mixed Jewish-Arab neighborhood. According to a 1900 census, the population of the neighborhood was 167 Muslim families, 97 Jewish families and 6 Christian families. In 1891, the Jewish Sephardi Council, known as Va'ad HaSfaradim, purchased plots of land around the Jewish holy site of Shimon HaTzadik, which is in the heart of Sheikh Jarrah, and according to tradition, is the burial place of the 3rd century BCE Rabbi Simon the Just. A Jewish community sprang up, centered around the tomb. By 1948, there were around 100 Jewish households around the tomb, However, with the outbreak of hostilities between Israel and its surrounding Arab countries in 1948, the residents were evicted from their homes by British authorities in fear for their safety. Following the war, Sheikh Jarrah and the eastern part of Jerusalem were occupied by Jordan. In 1956, the Jordanian government, in cooperation with the UN, housed 28 Arab refugee families in the former homes of the Jewish residents. However, Jordanian authorities never transferred ownership of the land to the Arab tenants, meaning that the properties in question were still legally owned by the Jewish Sephardi Council. In 1967, Jordan declared war on Israel and began shelling the Jewish neighborhoods of Jerusalem. In what became known as the Six-Day War, Israel counterattacked and captured the eastern side of Jerusalem, bringing Sheikh Jarrah under Israeli control. In 1970, Israel drafted a law that allows Jews to reclaim East Jerusalem land owned by Jews prior to 1948. The Arab residents stayed on in the properties as protected tenants, paying rent to the Sephardi Council. The protected status of the Palestinian tenants meant that they could not be evicted from their homes unless they break key clauses in the rental agreement, such as making modifications to the property or not paying rent. In 2003, the land was sold to an Israeli Jewish NGO called Nachalat Shimon, which aims to develop the plot for Jewish residents. In the 90s and early 2000s, a small number of properties were reclaimed by the owners and Jewish residents moved in. The Palestinian tenants stopped paying rent to the owners, effectively breaking the rental clause and opening them up to a legal challenge for eviction. The tenants claim that they do not recognize the right of Jewish Israelis over their homes. The case was taken to court, which ruled in favor of the owners. The tenants appealed to the Supreme Court, which was due to hear the matter in early May 2021, but the hearing was delayed due to spiraling violence. Ownership of the property isn't under dispute, the up for question now, on whether or not the protected tenants can remain in the property that is owned by a Jewish organization. Over here, you can see the properties in question. On the left in blue, you have the tomb of Shimon Tzadik, which today houses a number of Jewish synagogues and study houses. Beside the tomb to the right in yellow, you have the properties under contention, Jewish owned plots of land that are inhabited by Palestinian families. You can also see three Jewish owned properties in blue that have been reclaimed and currently house Jewish families. This may not seem like such a big deal, but this is way more than a rental dispute. It's a symbolic struggle over the future demographic makeup of Jerusalem. The Jewish owners have been waiting for this opportunity so that Jewish tenants can move in for ideological reasons. This is a threat to the local Arab population, a threat that feels familiar. This time, they've decided to make this case an icon for their struggle.